All right, good to see everybody here this evening. Take your songbook. We're going to sing together. Turn over to 490. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love. Let's all stand together to sing it. 490, for the Bible lead us. We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love. For Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May his soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All right, good singing, and uh, that's what we need, amen. Get a shot in the arm on Wednesday night and get revived. Uh, Brother Pierce and his wife and their daughter are here and uh, looking forward to hearing from them tonight. Uh, to say more about that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for another opportunity for us to gather together here. Thank you for the midweek service, Lord. It's always uh, such an enjoyable time and something we look forward to every Wednesday night. Thank you for bringing the Pierces to us. Thank you for their faithfulness for 18 years to serve you as missionaries. And Lord, I pray that your blessing be upon them tonight as they minister to us. Update us on what you've been doing in them and through them. And in the ministry of the military, ministry to the military. And Father, we pray that you'll also prepare our hearts that we'll receive what you want from the word of God tonight. That you, that is the truth that you would desire us to have this evening. And so, Lord, help us to uh, put aside uh, the things that would capture our mind, uh, things that would, would hinder us from hearing what the Spirit of God would want to say to our hearts tonight. And may you control this next hour so that we spend together. And we pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Uh, the Pierces were, uh, Brother Pierce was supported here, I think he said, since like 1995 or so. It's been a 98, okay, uh, before I came uh, to the church, and now we've supported them for these 11 years that I've been here, and the uh, Lord has uh, moved with uh, all, I, I'm, what do you, I, I'm, I'm, I want to say all points, and I'm not, it's not all points, it's all, it's, uh, what's the name of your mission agency? Armed Forces, that's what I'm looking for, and uh, Armed Forces Baptist Missions, and um they, uh, we, we support the Mahaney's there with Armed Forces Baptist Missions, and uh, they're at Barksdale Air Force Base. Uh, the uh, Pierces are at um, Fort Hood down in Killeen, Texas. Most people have known Fort Hood. Uh, it's not only a tremendously large base, and they'll tell you about that in a little bit, but uh, that's where the Fort Hood massacre was several years ago, and uh, the terrorist attack that happened there that they don't want to say was that, uh, but that's what it was, And um, but they've uh, just appreciate their faithfulness, and he's going to update us a little bit. I think he was last year five years ago. Uh, how many of you were here five years ago when he was here? Let me see your hand. You were here five years ago. How many were not here five years ago when he was here? That's what I thought. Um, good portion of the crowd. So I'm going to have Brother Pierce come. Uh, he's going to share a little bit. He's got a, a video that we'll see. Uh, he can introduce his family. You take next few minutes and you come right on, brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Slayball. You and Mrs. Faithful Service. Thank you, Bible Baptist Church in Grove City, for your years and years of faithful support and prayer to our ministry. Of course, we're the Pierces. Uh, we're serving as the Deputation Director, National Representative with Armed Forces Baptist Missions. I work directly under the General Director, and uh, we're excited about what God's doing. Of course, let me introduce my dear wife, Karen, 
and my daughter Jenny, uh, who's 10 going on 18 now, amen? And uh, we're thankful for our uh, family to be able to serve our sending church is Central Valley Baptist Church in Manteca, California. And our home church is Northside Baptist Church in Nolensville, Texas, right outside of Fort Hood. Uh, for all the new people, we'll just kind of give you uh, who the Pierces are. Uh, of course, my wife was raised in a Christian home, saved at the age of five, and surrendered to full-time service at the age of 13. She didn't know all what that would entail when she graduated. And, of course, she was attending a local Bible institute, and lo and behold, a single missionary came and preached at her dad's church there in Michigan. And by the end of that weekend, that missionary decided that that gal needed a date, and he couldn't think of a better man than himself. Amen? So we dated for five months, got engaged that Christmas, and was married the following May, uh, finished raising our support uh, for the first time, and I went, ahead and went to Germany where we planted and rebuilt churches all across Europe. My wife loves serving our military families and our wife uh, and the wives, and I'm so thankful for my wife. Now, my daughter Jenny, she was saved at the uh, age of six. Uh, she kept asking me about being baptized, and I said, baby girl, in order to be baptized, you got to be saved. And I said, if you want to get saved, you need to realize you're a sinner. And she looked at me. She said, Daddy, I'm not a sinner, but I'm going to pray you realize you are. So I knew she wasn't ready at that point. And sure enough, uh, a couple months later, she be God began to break her heart, and she accepted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior. Now, myself, I wasn't saved until the age of 11. A family down the street took me to church, and for the first time, I heard the precious gospel of Jesus Christ. I walked the aisle, accepted Christ as my personal Savior, but my family was unfaithful, godless as can be. We moved around, and it wasn't until a Tuesday night that a pastor... And a bus captain knocked my door of an independent Baptist church and invited me, invited me to ride the church bus. So it was through the bus ministry that I grew up uh, in the Lord. And, uh, uh, and, of course, God burned my heart about uh, uh, preaching at a young age. Uh, but my family had a rich history of military service, so I entered the United States military in 1987. And sure enough, it was there. Uh, I got to my first duty station, and I realized I needed to find a place to serve God, and I found a church right outside a post that was serving the military and their families. I went to Fort Hood, Texas. God allowed me to be a part of a church plant there. And Uncle Sam had uh, one more duty for me. Uh, Uncle Sam uh, chose to send me over to Operation Desert Storm, and our unit was quite spread out during that time. And uh, so we had the privilege of preaching the gospel, sharing the precious gospel of Christ. Uh, we were able to preach, have Bible study. I watched several of my peers uh, get saved. Uh, but any time that you go into a hostile situation, uh, you can only trust God who knows all things. I lost three of my buddies in combat operations uh, when we were moving across the berm. And God used that as a, a, a stone in my life to make sure that we would uh, always tell our men and women in uniform about the gospel of Christ. I feel like every one of them needs the opportunity to hear the gospel. And so through that, the series of events, God uh, worked in my heart about military missions over the years. Uh, we're thankful for what God's allowed us to do. What we'll do is we'll show our video, and then we'll talk a little bit more specifically what God's doing. Hello. Hello. My name my is name Doug, Doug Kerrigan. I'm, I'm the general director of Armed Forces, Armed Forces Baptist, Baptist Missions. I want to thank, I want to thank you for taking the opportunity to watch this video and prayerfully, prayerfully consider and support support this ministry. ministry. describe the men and women in uniform who fight for our freedom across the globe. They are, they are deployed to nearly 500 bases in 80 countries around the world. Although the United States meets their physical needs better than any country in the world, 
Often, Often their, their souls, souls go unguarded. Go unguarded. AFBM is dedicated to meeting the spiritual needs of these soldiers. Tasked, tasked with, with a worldwide mission, mission AFBM seeks to turn the souls of men and women in uniform and their, and their families to the, to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Christ. To do, to do this, this, AFBM, AFBM developed an effective strategy for ministry. For ministry. We first we worked to plant churches outside military bases around, around the world. Currently, Currently we, have we have churches in four countries, countries worldwide. Then, then we partner, we partner with these, these and other existing local churches, churches encouraging, encouraging them to develop a military evangelistic outreach program. program. In, in these churches, AFBM works to establish military service centers, service centers and an ideal means for reaching young, single, single military personnel. very great, grateful for the service, service center. center. Uh, not, not only did I save there, there but, I but I also met my wife, wife was, was the daughter, daughter of the director of the service, service center. center. So, so thank, thank you. We have, we have servicemen service centers, centers in three countries. We use, we use these, these centers, centers to train believers as soul winners and Bible, Bible teachers, turning, turning them into evangelists. We supply, we supply them with Bibles and tracts and, tracts and, and, encourage, and encourage them to sow, sow the seed of the gospel in their places of duty. In churches, in churches near veterans' homes or hospitals, AFBM strives to effectively minister to veterans. With our, with our military returning from active conflict, conflict God, God has opened new doors for AFBM to minister. The U.S. The US Department of Veterans Affairs estimates that one in five soldiers returning from the war in Afghanistan suffers from PTSD. That, that number, number doubles for Iraqi war veterans, and 60% and of Vietnam veterans have PTSD. The number, the number of PTSD, PTSD cases continues, continues to rise, and, and AFBM has, has been able to provide support, support for these soldiers. Hello, my name is Charlie, and I would just, I would like, just like to say thank you to Brother, Brother Kierger for writing the book, uh, Wounded, Wounded Spirits. Spirits. It, was it was definitely a godsend. I'm a veteran, I'm a veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and has, and dealt, has dealt with PTSD, PTSD for many years. I had, I had many problems, problems including thoughts of suicide. My time, my time in, in Vietnam is part, is part of me. There's not much I can do about that. that. But, but with, with your book and, and uh, the Bible, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on changing the effects that PTSD has, has on me. I got diagnosed with PTSD and mild, and mild depression. depression. The, the hope, hope I found as, as a child, child of God was amazing. The, the Lord, Lord gave his strength, strength to his work as, as the answer to me man's problems. Through, through scripture, Wounded Spirit, Spirit showed me that God, God has control of my life and my, and my PTSD. PTSD. If you know any veteran or anybody that suffers from PTSD, I recommend Wounds and Spirits. AFBM missionaries lead Bible studies on and near military bases. They open their homes to servicemen, offering meals and developing relationships. Wherever possible, AFBM also works to assist the families of both the veteran and the deployed. Through these, they can minister one-on-one -on -one to the heroes who defend our country. If, like us, God has given you a burden for the U.S. Armed Forces, there is something you can do. We need churches to support our missionaries to the military. We can provide missionaries and evangelists for revivals and missions conferences, but we need local churches to provide locations and follow up. We need, we need missionaries, missionaries called by God to, to labor for God in the field of the military. We, we need home office supporters. We, we need Bibles and, and tracts. Every month, month AFBM sends, sends thousands of Bibles and tracts around the world. We have, we have distributed nearly one million Bibles to our, to our military. You, you can pray, pray that Christ, Christ will have the preeminence in our ministry. I want to assure those of you that are considering we are here for you. Do not, Do not hesitate to contact us if you have questions or suggestions. We, we count it a privilege to serve together to reach no military for us. Fox Trot 3 4, this is Hotel Quebec Asia, over. Hotel Quebec Asia, this is Flight Alpha Fox Trot 3 4, carrying 3 4 5 of heroes back to their families after 14 months. 
Please, Please transmit over. over. Hey, that's our Fox Chat 3 for this is Hotel Quebec Asia. Let the heroes know you have cleared any territory we have their backs. Someone's smiling down, got speed and good thoughts for a smooth flight to take care of those heroes. Hotel Quebec Asia, out. Hotel Quebec Asia, this is Flight Alpha 3 4. We let them know they're safe and we are sending appreciation for shouting heroes. We owe you one, Hotel Quebec. Over. Flight Alpha 3 4, we owe them everything. Over and out. As you see through the video, AFBM has some goals. Number one is planting churches outside of bases. Number two, underneath the auspices of the local church, ministering through servicemen centers, and then ministering to veterans' home and veterans' facilities. Uh, but just about four or five years ago, we felt like there was something that needed to address this ideal of the PTSD. Uh, folks, it is real, and we believe God has the answer to help man's problems. And so our general director uh, wrote a book uh, dealing with it from a biblical perspective. Uh, this is the on, on pool that the VA doctors can draw from. But as a result of this, we have seen thousands saved. Thousands are being helped. We're continually getting reports. And uh, so what God has done now, we have over 30 anonymous groups in the United States. We're in several major camps, hosting camps, helping families of those who are dealing with this. And uh, also... Uh, with the camps, uh, several regional conferences, training leaders and helping leaders get started through our Wounded Spirits Institute. So God really has opened up many new doors. We're, we're thankful for what God did. About five years ago, uh, with working with Brother Doug, we were at about uh, 30, we're at 53, so we were at uh, about 33 missionaries. We're growing by four families a year. We're at about 53 missionary families. We're thankful for that. And uh, so when we came back in 2011, Brother Doug asked me uh, medically that doctors wanted me to, be, to be more safe side for more health issues and things of that nature. And so we took upon the position there. And so Karen and I have been involved with the recruiting end of the ministry. We're in several Bible colleges and churches recruiting missionaries and families. Also, we're involved with training. We believe missionaries are sent out of local churches, so we work with their local churches in training them. And then we like to assist our missionaries with their church plants around the globe. It's kind of unique. Uh, we uh, are seeing a work uh, start at least every couple years now, church being planted. Uh, we're grateful for that privilege to be a part of that. Uh, one of the great things that God's allowed AFBM to do, we printed our millionth Bible this year, or uh, was put together and sent out. And we're grateful for our uh, Bible distribution. But we spent uh, four years uh, the, since 2011 to uh, uh, just the beginning of this year, five years, uh, out on the west coast and we've been in uh, several major conferences major, uh, major bible colleges also we've been able to help several churches close to military installations on how to have a, a effective military type ministry help them get things established and while preaching out at fort hood last year i i was sitting there and i you know i was thinking you know here we're there and you know here we need to be right where there's a huge military base and uh and so uh, we prayed about it, and uh, Brother Carragher and I talked about it. We felt like that we needed someone there to help the churches there. Our goal is to bring in missionaries to help the five, five or six different churches in that area to help establish their military ministries. And uh, we just felt like with the base that size, there's 47,000 active duty. That's two heavy divisions with uh, uh, family members, 189,000 family members. Uh, with retirees, there's 38,000 retirees. Texas has a, a state with the most veterans that there is. And then uh, with government workers, there's 16,000. So we're looking at about 250, 60,000 right there in that community of Fort Hood, Texas. And so we're excited about what God's doing. We've already uh, got one man uh, that's uh, uh, just getting married, getting ready to start raising support, going to work uh, at one of the churches across town and establish a servicemen center. And so we're just so excited about that opportunity. God's been real good. God allowed us the, the privilege, and we are so honored to be able to serve him all them years. Now we're able to invest our time, and that God allows us to have remaining here to be able to invest it in missionaries, starting churches, and putting churches close to bases. I want to tell you thank you personally for supporting the Mahaneys. Uh, Brother Rick is a real blessing, and many of you know that uh, he was wheelchair-bound because of an accident and an operation, you know, but that doesn't slow Brother Mahaney down. I, I had the privilege of picking Brother Mahaney up with his son and 
we pulled him up to the platform and he preached a powerful message down at our, uh, out down at our uh, candidate school. And him and his dear wife Susie are doing a tremendous job at Barksdale. And I want to say that you folks are a part of that. Karen and I cannot do anything. And I, I told Pastor, I think I'll tell the story. Uh, one of the areas of the PTSD, because of your faithful giving, we're, we're allowed to do some extra things to help our missionaries. When we go there, we don't have to be a burden. We can be a help to them, uh, do things for God to help them, be an encouragement to them, do extra things, and uh, just do special things to make their church plan easier. And uh, one of the things that just a couple months ago, we had a PTSD camp, and there was a gentleman and his family that really needed help, and he was in several tours, Iraq and in Afghanistan, and God laid on my wife and I heart that we're going to pay that couple's whole way to one of our camps. And, you know, God, God changed that man that week. God got a hold of him, and he realized that God could free him up from this of dealing with PTSD and help him and learn how to cope with it and deal with it. It was amazing. And I'll never forget that week that man put his head on my shoulder and cried, and he said, Brother Pierce, you just don't know the impact that this had on me this week. And I thought in my mind, you know, uh, our churches just need to realize the impact that they're having in, in our ministries. And Bible Baptist, I just want to tell you, if it wasn't for you, Karen, I could have not done it all these years uh, when we came here as young missionaries. And I just want to say uh, the reason we're able to do what we're doing and continue to do is a result of you. Pray for us. Uh, we run a busy schedule. We're on the road about 40-something weeks a year and uh, in and out and uh, helping our home church and uh, you just pray that God would continue to have the preeminence in our ministry. Pastor. All right. We won't uh, have the normal prayer guide reading and all that this evening. We'll, we'll forego that. Uh, but do pray uh, for the uh, Davis family. Um, some of you have had that on the prayer line before Glenn Davis he's uh, in a hospital down in Raleigh North Carolina uh, these were folks who I think attended Bible Baptist many years ago and um, he's not doing very well at all very critical condition and uh, in fact the Taylors have left to go down there to be with Mrs. Davis and uh, they're on their way there so pray for safety for them as they travel down and try to be a an encouragement and a comfort to uh, this wife who's uh, watching her husband uh, slip into eternity really so uh, keep them in your prayers if you would all right and um, as far as regular regular schedule Friday night with RU um, Saturday morning uh, let's continue to get the flyers out we're just over 4,000 now that have gotten out since Sunday that have been taken uh, so we still got a good jump on it and boy some beautiful days to do it in wasn't it and uh, not many times, what you, well, you say, we were going to get an 80 degree day on November 1st? No, it's never happened before. It was a, yesterday and today, where I think we're both record uh, setting temperatures. So uh, we'll take advantage of that. And uh, it's not going to stay that way, um, which is okay, by the way. And, uh, but we're going to, uh, let, let's keep on getting out, inviting folks to come. And uh, let's pray for November 13th, all right? And uh, good to have the DeWitts with us this evening. And uh, Todd and Sarah stopped in for the service. Sure, I'm glad uh, to see them. They're heading to Brazil on December the 6th. Uh, so uh, be, that's exciting. And I'm sure they got a crew down there anxious to have them come and uh, join in with them. So that's, uh, that's exciting. And I was telling them they're flying out on the 6th. And is that when John and Emily come in? Come in on the 6th uh, from Uganda. And uh, so uh, exciting things happening. All right, uh, let's see. Anybody else visiting tonight that I don't, that I may have missed? Okay, very good. Take your songbook. Let's sing again together then, all right? Turn over to number 298. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. Let's stand together to sing it, shall we? Brother Bob. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can save. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost. Eternity 
Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together. I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. On that last together, joy flood my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood he gave to redeem. Now I belong to him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Good singing. You may be seated. Ushers will come. We'll get our offering tonight, and the offering tonight will go to Brother Pierce and his uh, family as they are on the road now. They'll be on the road really right up till Thanksgiving, and uh, be making a try to make the miles back to Texas to be back home for for Thanksgiving. But they'll be traveling that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to get that trip done. And uh, it's uh, let's be a blessing to them. Don't know what the, all the needs are, but God knows the needs and. Uh, let's pray that we'll be a blessing, be able to meet some of those needs, and maybe even a one or two that they have, and be a blessing to them tonight. All right, let's pray for the offering. Father, thank you for the privilege uh, that's ours to give. Thank you, Lord, for a church that loves missionaries and uh, just loves the people who love God. And Lord, I pray that the giving tonight will be a blessing to the Pierce family and 
Uh, Lord will take care of uh, some needs they have and maybe even some wants that they've been asking you for. But Lord, I pray that our gift tonight would be a great blessing to their family. Use him as he ministers the word of God to us tonight now. In Jesus' name, amen. And Sarah, appreciate you doing that. Well, Brother Pierce is going to come and preach to us tonight. I think, uh, is your daughter going to sing? All right, she's daughter's going to come and sing, and uh, then Brother Pierce will preach to us this evening. All right, you want to use that microphone? Yeah, show me.
I'll be honest, I know what time it is. I got to tell you, I told Pastor I went to Pennsylvania years ago. I preached there, and there was a bunch of deer hunters in the church. And it was deer season, man. You don't mess with Pennsylvania deer hunters. <laughs> and uh, I went out there, and man, they, they said, Brother, we're going to probably take you on. But that hinges on one thing it's deer season, and we're packed up, ready to go after church. And he says, you know, these guys like to get out there quite fast. And uh, how's that? Am I good? And uh, so I said, hey, uh, we better, uh, I said, we better hurry up. And so we got everybody out there. As they were walking out, they said, hey, let's vote that missionary on. Amen. And uh, so we want to make sure, hey, I want to honor all the veterans. If you served Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard, could you stand up with me tonight? These are our heroes, folks. Thank you so much. Let's give these heroes a round of applause. <laughs> Praise God. These are my brothers, and that's my real brother. He was in first cav, amen, and uh, he was artillery back in Vietnam. Thank you so much. I appreciate each of you. I mean that, and, uh, and uh, God bless you. Uh, what a joy it is. You've been so good to us. Th Pastor, thank you. The, this is wonderful what God's doing. The building is so beautiful. Uh, what God's done here, and uh, you guys are so blessed. Uh, Matthew chapter number 9, Matthew chapter number 9, Matthew chapter number 9, verse number 35, And, and Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdoms and the healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved uh, with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then seeth unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And then over there in Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 51, we find a verse where he said he was concerned about the cities, and he said what he saw, his eye affected his heart. And then in John chapter 4, 435, the Bible talks about look unto the fields, for they're already ripe from the harvest. You know, I, I've got to confess, I, I, I'm not much of a farmer, and, uh, and I'll tell you a little a couple things here in a little bit, but here we... See Jesus coming into the villages, preaching the gospel, and healing in the cities. And here we see Jesus. He was moved by the multitude. You know, uh, there's something about being moved that, that calls for action. And he was moved and he had compassion. And see, we see Jesus noticing the amount of people that was, uh, there was with a lack of individuals to reach them. You know, I, I don't know a lot about farming. I've never been around a lot of farming. Uh, really, I, I, have, I have bad flashbacks of horses, amen? And uh, i got to be honest with you, uh, my, we're coming back on white horses, but my flashback is like a white horse, amen? My aunt stuck us on this horse, and my cousins and I, that thing bucked me off, threw me in a rose bush, and I'm in the hospital getting prickers pulled out of me. Man. And so, so I know God's going to let us come back on white horses, but my past with white horses are not that much. Uh, second time, uh, I, 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 I was riding a horse one time, and uh, uh, we're sitting there at the, one of them resorts, and every time I got on the horse, the horse wouldn't do nothing. It would hardly do anything. It just wanted to eat everywhere. So I'm afraid to kick the horse. I didn't want to buck me off, and so I'm like, come on, buddy, please, you know. Come on, man. Please help old Harold out here, you know. And... Uh, Finally, the horse got there, and third time was in camp. And, you know, one time my uncle had this cow. I'll just tell you, I'll be honest, I'm not a farmer, man. He said the cow got loose. And he said, Tommy and Harold, he said, I want you to go get that cow back in there. So I said, you know what, I played football. I got something for that cow. So I got down like a middle <laughs> linebacker, man. I went to hit that thing, and it ran over me. <laughs> it was terrible. So finally, man, we, we, uh, uh, there was this uh, horn laying around that was for a tricycle, man. So I started blowing that horn, trying to chase that cow inside the, where it needed to go. It got in there finally. But I, I don't know much about farming. I'll be honest. I'm a city slicker. And, uh, but I do know this years ago, I was going across these fields uh, uh, in Westville, Indiana. And I'll never forget, I saw all that field. And you know what came to my mind? 
Someone has to harvest them fields. Someone has to harvest this field. And this is the setting that we have. Jesus is coming into this field, and he's looking at this harvest here. And uh, let's go ahead and pray. I want to preach on the subject, the burden that Jesus had about the mission field. Let's pray. Father, now help us. These next few minutes, I pray, Lord, may your word be honored. Bless us tonight as we worship you. Thank you for these dear, faithful folks of Bible Baptist Church. Thank you for Pastor and Mrs. Slave, all their faithful, faithful service. Thank you for children riding buses, children being saved. And Lord, thank you for how this church has grown in just so many ways. Lord, thank you for their tremendous outreach in this area. We do love you. We thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to notice in verse 35, and Jesus went about all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. I, I want you to know uh, Jesus knew the great hour. Amen. Jesus knew that he would have his disciples for uh, three, three and a half years. So he knew that what he had to teach him. He, he knew what they needed to be directed in because he knew one day he would be leaving, but that work would continue on through uh, the work as disciples. And folks, I want you to know that we are Jesus' disciples. We may not be his apostles, but we are his disciples, carrying on his work, that great commission to, uh, today. And, and folks, uh, Jesus saw the great hour. Jesus valued his time. He knew he would only be here three, three and a half years. But not only did uh, Jesus value his time, and folks, we got so much to value today. Uh, Lord, I know things seem dark in a lot of different ways, but that gives us the opportunity to spread so much more light. Not only did Jesus value his time, and, but Jesus validated his testimony. He validated who he was, that he truly was the Son of God. Then, not only did Jesus value his time, but he validated his testimony, but Jesus voiced his teaching. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And really what we're doing during this great hour today, we're voicing the teaching of Jesus. We're validating the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that Christ is coming back one day for you and I that are saved. And if you're here tonight and you're not saved, tonight would be a great night to be saved. Oh, we do have a great hour. And I think uh, what a privilege it is to be able to reach our military and their families around the globe and uh, so much darkness that we are faced with. But here I'm here to not to paint a negative picture. I'm here to paint a positive picture of what the gospel can do in a man, woman, boys, and girls' life. Uh, if they uh, accept Christ as their personal Savior and yield to Him what He can do in their life. Then I want you to notice verse number 36. But when He saw the multitudes, He was moved. Wow. You ever see something that just moves you? You know, a person that, that can't get moved concerns me. You know, you can't help but walk an area where you see where people are hurting and people are being pained and it just moves you. I'll never forget the first time that I took a missions trip down in Mexico. It moved me. It changed my life. You know, my pastor looked over and he said, I want you to know that's brown gold. I'm looking around, you know. He said, no, right here. See all these people? Brown gold, Brother Harold. He said, they need Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It changed my life. You know, and I'll tell you, uh, the the... Uh, what's out there is what we need to see. See, Jesus saw. Oh, may we be looking through the eyes of Christ for the souls of men, women, boys, and girls. Not only, uh, not only you know, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I get near a military base, and I think that stirred me up so much after not really being close to a base, after going near Fort Hood, and I, I saw all these soldiers. I see that green uniform. It does something for me. I don't care whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Last church we started, there was a Marine there. He said, Pastor, I'm like two men. I said, I need both of you, amen. And uh, they helped us, got that church started. But he was, uh, uh, when you see, it, it stirred my heart. You know, and uh, what we see affected, uh, that's what Lamentations was talking about. But not only did he saw, but he was stirred. His, his heart was stirred. I ask you tonight, do you keep your heart stirred? And you know, I'm glad you had your missions conference. You know what a missions conference does? It stirs your heart. You know what? This young couple going to Brazil, brother, I'm so happy for you, getting ready to leave. You've been on deputation, man. You've traveled the miles. Man, you put on your A game night after night, amen? 
and you've gone in and you've done your best to represent the Lord. Now you're going to go reach them people that need the gospel so much. My brother saw something there, and it stirred this couple's heart to go and tell people in Brazil, amen, about the precious gospel of Christ. Thank you so much for yielding to the call. See, the great harvest, he, was, he saw, but he was stirred in his heart, but stirred into action. But I notice verse 37, Then seeth unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. He said, we've got plenty of harvest. There's not a question about not enough mission fields. There's enough mission fields out there. We need laborers. We need missionaries. And, you know, I spend a lot of time recruiting. I'm looking for families to work with the military. Amen? Maybe there's some families right here and uh, that's going to come and work with the military. Maybe, maybe there's a family here that would like to reach these veterans' homes and veterans' facilities in this area that maybe can work through and uh, try to reach them and let them know that they're, they're cared for and loved on and, and uh, maybe, even, maybe even have a PTSD group right out of, outside of Bible Baptist Church and, and try to help these veterans and their families. Uh, but notice the great hope. Jesus said, then he said to the disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Notice the great hope. Notice what we see here. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. You know what, concerning this great hope? There was a movement to prayer. You know, uh, Jesus could have worked it out because he was the son of God, right? But you know what he told his disciples? He set the example of what we got to do when there's a great need is pray. Oh, folks, you know, and I'm not going to get off on election, but man, there's a great need for prayer for our country, isn't there? And boy, we need to pray more than ever. Boy, we need to pray. And Jesus said the answer to this uh, lack of labors is we've got to pray. And you know what? You know what we need in our churches more than ever and in our hearts of our missionaries and us as missionaries? We need to pray and say, oh, God, you can work in the hearts. I'll never forget uh, Doug and I begin to take prayer requests and we begin to pray that, God, you would send us some good families each year and, and here's where we have a burden to go to and a burden there. And, you know, God seems to be answering that prayer time after time and God gives us a young family. You know, we're blessed to have seven families on the road right now raising support to go around the globe. And we don't take that lightly working with them. We don't take that lightly uh, that their pastor entrusts us to help them and to be an encouragement to them. We work beside that local churches. But we've been praying that God would continue to enlarge our coast, to reach the harvest. Oh, how we need a movement to prayer. Then I say we need a movement of power. How we need the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, our work cannot get done by ourselves but how we need the hand of God. And, and Jesus said, not only do we need to see a movement of prayer, but let's pray ye therefore the Lord of a harvest that he will. You know what we're here tonight? All of us are a bunch of uh, individuals that's been saved that see the he will in our lives. Amen? Amen. You know what? Because if we didn't see the he will, sometimes I don't think we'd stick it out, would we? I wouldn't. Man, if I, if I don't serve a God that's he, he will, man, I, I might as well go the other direction. But you know, I, we, I've seen God do so many things. That he is the he will. What did he say? I am of the I am? Boy, we, not only do we need a movement to prayer, a movement to power, but I, I say this, we need a movement of people. Boy, how we need a working together to fulfill the will of God. And boy, how uh, that one person cannot do it all, but if we all bind together, how we can do it. Pray ye therefore the Lord of harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Does prayer matter? I, I believe it does. i never forget we had a couple that came in our last ministry that we were at. And uh, some folks are kind of quiet and this family came as a result. We had the privilege of baptizing the, baptizing the dad and the three boys and Debbie was saved in a military ministry and uh, Scott was kind of quiet until one day we were out there playing some football. I noticed he played pretty good football and he came up to me, he said, Pastor, he goes, you were in the military. And uh, I said, I was. I, he said, you were in Desert Storm, wasn't you, Pastor? He said, yes. And, uh, and I, we were going to talk a little military. I said, Scott, so what do you do? He said, I don't know what I do sometimes, Pastor. And he was at this a long time, and then he began to tell me several tours and find out this guy was in the 10 Special Forces. We all know what the 10 Special Forces. Them are the guys that take out the Bin Ladens and, uh, and uh, work with other groups of the military. And uh, sure enough, uh, um, 
Scott, before he left, he said, Pastor, he said, uh, I want you to come pray. I said, well, I said, do you think your chaplain would have a problem with that or anything? He said, Pastor, he said, we're the SF. We kind of do things our way. He said, the pastor prays a little different than you do. I said, sure, Scott. I said, I'll be right over. Came over, prayed with his team as they were getting ready to leave, had a wonderful time in prayer, and uh, saw, saw, saw one saved there. And, and I'll never forget, uh, we sent care packages down, and as a result of your giving, we were able to send care packages down quite regularly. Sure enough, a, a couple weeks uh, into this thing, uh, Scott had a new team, and they were caught under fire. And, uh, and sure enough, Scott had a piece of rocket that came off, sheared his Kevlar. But he was all right, and thank God my, my dear wife went over to Debbie and the boys and spent the night there, just loved on her and cared for him. And, and Scott told his men, he said, you know, uh, he said, I can't guarantee everything. He said, everything's in God's hand. And he said, but I, I can't guarantee. I believe my pastor prays, and I believe he has churches all across America praying for us. Sure enough, a couple weeks later, they were in another firefight, and Scott saw rounds left and right, and one of the guys said, hey, Scott, is pastor still praying for you? We sure need it, man. He said, guys, I know churches all across America are praying. I'll never forget when that couple left our church. He stood up and he said, pastor, he said, you know, we didn't have this biggest work over here. And he said, but, you know, he said, my boys got saved here. They got baptized. He said, my, my family learned how to pray here. And you know what? God changed that family's life through praying. And you know, he said something. He said, Pastor, you don't know how appreciative that my family are that not only did you pray, but you had churches all across America praying. Years ago when we went to the field, you, we said, you know, we'd like to make a difference in people's life, but the people we worked with have changed us. Folks, prayer does change things. Amen. And prayer changed Scott's life. Your prayers changed a family's life in just a great way. I want you to know, folks, you keep on praying for your missionaries in a great way. Let's pray with heads bowed, eyes closed. And uh, I'm just going to ask the pianist to come, and we'll just give a brief invitation. How many would say by the uplifted hand, Brother Pierce, if I die tonight, I know for sure I'm on my way, way to heaven. Pray for me. You know that you're saved. You can put your hands down. God bless you. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Pierce, I'm not saved. Pray for me. Is there anyone like that in our midst? I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. Pray for me. Just raise your hand. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. And as the pianist becomes to play, maybe God's dealt with your heart about something. You step on out. Maybe God's working your heart about military missions and missions in general. Let pastor know. Hey, be a missionary right here. Maybe there's a class. Maybe there's a bus route. Maybe there's something you can be involved in and pastors been praying. Oh, God, I, we need individuals to get involved. And you'd say, Pastor, I, I want to be a blessing. I'll help in the area that you have. Maybe that's you. You step on out tonight. for you to come while she's playing tonight why don't you at least do what he just talked about why don't you at least pray ask God what would you have me to do if you've never done that you ought to do that say God I want to do what you want me to do I'll be a laborer that's what he asked for just be a willing worker wherever he places you That's right. Amen.
have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Are we willing to ask him to do that? Go ahead and look this way for just a minute. If you have your, uh, Brother Pierce, thank you. That's good. And, uh, you know, there's always been labor trouble for God. No problem with the harvest. No problem with the work. There's plenty of work to do, plenty of harvest to bring in. The labors are few. And uh, this needs, and he takes volunteers. Okay, he takes volunteers. Isaiah said, here am I, Lord send me. One of the greatest evangelists of the 20th century is Dr. John R. Rice. Dr. R. John R. Rice was a volunteer. He had volunteered down at the Pacific Garden Mission uh, when he was at the University of Chicago, the great Pacific Garden Mission where Billy Sunday was saved. And uh, Dr. Rice went down there on a weekend and saw a man, led a man to Christ, and he went back the next weekend and that man came back and only he didn't look like the guy the week before. He had got himself a suit and a tie, and he was dressed up and changed life. And Dr. Rice said, you know, I think I like to do this all the time, and just surrendered, and uh, just did, started serving God. Uh, God takes volunteers, amen, and I uh, like that. Hey, a couple of prayer requests to put onto your prayer list. So if you've got your list there and you use that as prayer time, um, the, the one that didn't make it on there, and that was just an oversight on our part, is a friend of Carol Hoskins named Laurel, Laura Marshall. Laura, L-A-U-R-A, Marshall. Uh, please pray for her. She's got cancer and some other health problems, and uh, she's, uh, as far as Carol knows, probably not saved. So really, really lift her up in prayer, if you would. Okay. And the other one is, uh, do you know... Do you know Rob Barnett's, do you know his na her name, Brother Gary? Rob Barnett is the owner of the company that Gary works for, and his mother is in very critical condition. And Gary just assured his, him that he would bring that to the church tonight to pray uh, for this man's mom who's in very critical condition tonight. So Rob Barnett, it's his mother. And so we want to pray for these folks tonight as we uh, close our service in prayer, okay? All right, let's bow together, shall we? Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for what we've heard. And, uh, Father, we do thank you for the, especially this ending admonition of prayer. Uh, Lord, you, you said we ought to pray, ye therefore, that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into his harvest. And, uh, Lord, we're thankful for the privilege that's ours to pray. And, Lord, we do lift up uh, the request here, and uh, particularly uh, Mr. Barnett's mother and Laura, as she battles cancer and whatever the health issues are that Rob's mother's dealing with. Lord, we don't know the situation, but we're confident you do. And Lord, I don't know the eternal, uh, I don't know how, they're, how it is with their soul, either one of them. I pray that they would uh, both come to know you as their Savior before it's eternally too late. Uh, Father, I pray that you would work in both these situations and draw these people to yourself. Lord, we pray for Mr. Davis and his wife and for the Taylors as they travel down to be with them. Lord, I pray they'll be a great comfort and encouragement to her uh, during this time. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the wonderful service here together this evening. I pray your continued hand of blessing to be upon the Pierces as they travel and minister. Continue to supply laborers, Lord, to reach our military. Uh, these men and women who put themselves in harm's way to defending our freedom and defending our country. 
I pray, Lord, that you would raise up laborers to have a great ministry among them and you continue to bless the pierces and continue to give them fruit for your glory and for your honor. Dismiss us now with your care, Lord. We love you. Use us to do your work in the way you'd want it to be done. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. The pieces are back there. I believe the book that he mentioned on PTSD, I believe you have that for sale, do you not? You have some of those? How much are they? Seven dollars. Wow, you can't hardly buy a book for seven dollars anymore. And uh, that's a great deal. So uh, more than likely, how many of you know somebody who has PTSD or suffers from it in some way? How many of you know that? Several of you do. It, it affects so many people now. That'll be a help to them. And uh, so go ahead and pick that up. And maybe you just want to read it and you'd be informed a little more about what it is. Some of you may not even know what, it, what that is or what that's all about. Uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a great help. And they'll be back there. Make sure you meet them and talk to them and thank them for coming our way and reporting in tonight. All right. I'm pressing on the upward way. Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. So praying as I'm onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord lift me up and let me send my faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You're dismissed.